Ah, what a wonderful day. The bees are buzzing, the trees are barking, my nuts are glistening in the sun. <laughs> hey peeps, it's Andercon. And uh, I'm gonna do a bunch of recapping. Basically, I've done a lot of stuff off camera and I need to get you all caught up. Uh, one of which is the pyramid. It's actually coming along incredibly well. Uh, actually, the builder bot um, program, it was a shape builder program, kind of failed on the pyramid. And I ended up having to build this all by hand, so it took forever. But, uh, it may have been because a cow got in the way or something, I don't know. It started building the entire pyramid, like, lopsided. <laughs> so, uh, I ended up just doing all this by hand, and it actually probably took a lot less resources because of these gigantic gaps of doom. So, let's go ahead and uh, look around at this. It's still highly incomplete, but I got the general structure mostly finished. I don't have all the floors in or anything. But uh, it's going to look incredibly awesome when I'm done. Uh, I still got so much more to do to this. Um, so up here, obviously, I'm going to have my uh, workshop uh, up about here, and I haven't got the floor in yet. Now it's probably going to be made entirely of viewer glass. Uh, let me show you that. Let's see here, what about a pocket crafting table? Uh, the glass viewer is made with eight glass and the one piece of iron, so I just got a whole bunch of it right here, and uh, I'm probably going to need quite a bit of this. <laughs> and I'm going to just have like an entire floor made out of this stuff. Now this stuff is really cool, and I think this is a Zycraft block, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, I don't have a um, Optifine or any other mod that connects the glass installed. This particular stuff does it for you anyway. It's just that awesome. And also, I love this stuff because you can break it and collect it back up. It doesn't actually destroy itself when you break it. So that's going to be pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to have the entire floor made of that, all these huge windows made out of that, and it's going to look pretty cool. Now, another thing I'm going to probably throw in here is a bunch of uh, Zycraft blocks. So let me make up a little bit of that. Uh, Specifically on the middle floor, I want to have an outer wall. It's currently blank. So let me hit the C with the pocket crafting table here. And this is how you make uh, blue engineering brick. So this is uh, blue zacondrite. I hope I spell, uh, <laughs> spelled it. <laughs> I hope I said that right. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, it's the way I like to say it. And uh, this stuff is pretty cute. Now you get those ingots from smelting the crystals you collect. Now this stuff, uh, like I got these nice pillars here, but I was going to put this stuff like right around here, pretty much. And I don't know for sure if I'll go with this or not, I might go with something else. But I really would like to integrate a bunch of Zycraft blocks into this building. Because uh, I've never actually had a good reason to build with it yet. And it actually looks pretty neat stuff. Um, hopefully that'll go with the, uh, the sandstone, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know for sure. Well, I'll try a bunch of it and just see how it goes. Um, see if it looks alright or not. You, you just never know until you try, basically. Uh, I'll probably also stick maybe some other blocks inside of this, like on windows or something. Uh, or I might switch this little spot where I have my door designated out. Uh, if I switch out the door, I think that would look pretty cool. Uh, pretty much I just want a dark layer in the, in the middle to make it look kind of futuristic and stuff. And I'm probably going to have most of the inside walls made out of this kind of stuff here. Um, that might work. So I'll probably switch this out for something else later. And uh, also I'm probably going to put in a bunch of doors that are controlled by Red Power's frames. I think that's what they are. Yeah. And uh, that ought to be fun. Now, i got a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I hadn't shared the basement at all. Like, way down here. This took forever to dig. <laughs> uh, it's just such a huge area. This entire place turned out to be something like, if you include this outside wall here, I think it's somewhere around 55 by 55 blocks, maybe 53, or something like that. Um, 
and it is just enormous. So this took quite some time. Some of this I dug out by hand and some of it I used this turtle here. Now there's a, a turtle called Excavate, the X-E-A-V-A-T-E, and then you tell it how big of a size, say 55 or something. I used probably like 31 for this particular room. And then you hit enter and uh, I think you put fuel in the very first slot. Uh, and then if you use coal and if he goes and digs up coal it'll end up in that slot most likely and it'll kind of refuel itself a little bit over time and it'll pick up a bunch of junk and I'm not going to execute this because I already got the floor in there <laughs> I don't really want to have to make it again but he'll keep going down to bedrock until he runs out of fuel or something and if you put a chest behind him and I this one's on top for some reason, but uh, if you have a chest behind him, he'll put the stuff in the chest. Uh, this chest must have been from when I was ex excavating from here. I also used him to uh, put in the floors with that shape building program. If you use the platform setting, he does pretty good floors, and uh, that works. Now, I got uh, way back in here a whole bunch of empty spaces uh, for various rooms and things. I'm going to have another floor right about here. So this is the bottom floor, this will be a second floor, and who knows what all I'm going to put in this. I just want a whole lot of extra room to put things in. I don't have anything in this place at all yet. And I might actually put some little farms out in this little area right here, like um, just some carrot farms and maybe cactus and some reed farms and stuff like that, just stuck down there in the bottom. Uh, around the outside, so this place is looking great, uh, and it's going to look better <laughs> as I continue to work on it. Uh, I probably will do most of that off camera, here and there, bits and pieces, and uh, give you updates every episode, basically, as I do other things as well. So, the other thing going on here is, you notice, I got a bunch of trees already. This is from all the tree and bee breeding. And uh, these trees here are, well, this is just a jungle tree, and I've had these sitting here forever since I already got the kind of tree I wanted them uh, to be. And I got uh, these particular, oh, what were these called? I only just smack a sapling and see. Uh, give me a sapling. It's not just nuts. There we go. This is a silver lime. Okay, this one is bred with um, a chestnut tree. Mm -hmm and it will give you a bunch of chestnuts. Now I also bred the holy hell out of these things to make a super tree and let me go back to my house and show you what I got. Assuming I can remember where I put my uh, tree elizer. I think it's in one of these chests. Let's see, I don't have it on me. Uh, not the anvil. Uh, there it is, tree elizer. Okay. Now over here, oh, I got 64 plus 5 of a particular kind of tree here. This is a silver lime with a red spruce. It just happened to be that way. I bred this thing with every damn thing, practically. Triple saplings, sure is fastest. It's a larger height. Normal yield of chestnuts, which is pretty nice. Now, the sappiness doesn't matter in the particular version I'm running, but in the next version, next major version of forestry, if you have a low sappiness and you try to make biofuel out of a uh, sapling, that has low sappiness, you're not going to get much biofuel. But if it has a really high sappiness, you'll get a whole bunch more biofuel out of it. Now, the current version I have, this does nothing. So I'll always get the same amount of uh, biofuel out of this particular sapling, no matter what. So I bred this thing with uh, balsa trees to get the triple sapling drop, which is nice. And I'll get a lot of biofuel out of that. I, mm, I think I got the, the fastest out of... A combination of, um, I think it was jungle trees, and it was a jungle tree bred with a cherry tree, pretty much. Just randomly gave me that particular trait, and I end up breeding that with a silver lime. Height is from the uh, jungle trees for sure, and the normal was off of a, that was off a cherry tree. So I've been breeding the hell out of these silver limes just to get something good out of it. Uh, so let me go ahead and grab a bone here and show you what this thing does. I think it turned nighttime on me. Uh, hey you. Stop being night! <laughs> I want some daylight! <laughs> I don't, well, don't want to be, get shot in the middle of my demonstration. Here. Oh. Hey Cal. Mm. And let's see, I'll just slap this thingy down here. Uh, right here will work. Scoot this soul shard out of the way. And I'll get to that shortly. 
And then we got a really, really, really tall tree, <laughs> silver lime, with a bunch of nuts on it, basically. Now, if you break this now, these nuts are not uh, ripe yet. So you're just going to get like a sapling out of it, no nuts. And this thing's going to drop saplings like mad because, you know, triple sapling drop. Now, you got to wait a while, and I haven't timed how long exactly. But um, I'll do that event, uh, shortly, like, you know, maybe in the next day or two. When I got, uh, before I got a, a farm set up for these, I'll time it. Because um, these ones here are ripe, and they've been sitting here forever. Now, if you break this, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a nut. Now, these chestnuts here produce a lot of, uh, see, it isn't biofuel, it's, um, oh, I got a whole bunch of it over here. Nut oil? I think that's it. Yeah, seed oil. That'll work. So, I got these, uh, the squeezer here, and you throw your nuts in the squeezer. That sounds painful. <laughs> it's like handing them to my wife. <laughs> Just squeeze the hell out of them. Ouch. <laughs> She's got a tight grip. Uh, anyway, so it'll uh, turn this stuff into seed oil. And the seed oil stuff is good for uh, making frames and stuff out of, but it also has another use I found out. Now, um, I don't know if this is a recent addition or if I only just found out about it recently, but here I got a biogas engine, and if you put in seed oil, uh, the biogas engine will run off of seed oil at uh, 3 megajoules a tick. I'm going to turn this thing on. Uh, it'll use a little bit of lava to start up, and then it'll it'll get going. Okay, there. There it goes. Three me megajoules a tick for uh, seed oil, and one of these things, I timed it, lasts... Actually, I figured it out through math. It lasts um, 8 minutes and 20 seconds. So, if you have an entire stack of seed oil, it will last literally just under 9 hours off of one stack. And so, that is pretty good, <laughs> to be honest. I had several stacks of it in here, making me a whole bunch of extra smooth sandstone since I needed it for my projects and stuff. So, uh, that's that. Next up, uh, you may have noticed, and I have briefly mentioned, I got a soul shard right here. Let me go ahead and get rid of this stuff here. I got a bunch of this made up for later. Uh, I got this soul shard here, and this one's a creeper spawner, or soul shard sort of thingy. And, uh... I'm going to show you how to make those if you never really looked into it. Uh, I don't remember the name of the mod. Maybe it was Soul Shards? I don't really know. Um, so, to get started with that and making Soul Shards, you're going to need three things. Some Soul Sand, preferably eight of them, I believe. And eight pieces of Glowstone Dust. And there you go. And you're going to need one diamond. Kind of expensive, but uh, oh well, not too bad. And you're going to need to uh, cook your soul sand. Huh. Alright, so soul sand's being cooked, and you're going to get vile dust. And eventually you'll get all eight of your vile dust. <laughs> it, it takes it a minute. Come on, push, push. Well, it's four of them anyway. So you take your vile dust, and you combine it with glowstone dust. And this gives you corrupted essence. And you're going to need at least four of these. Or, I mean, eight. Yeah, eight of these. <laughs> Four. All right, and you're gonna need that to cook your diamond, but you have to do it in a special furnace. So let me go and make up the rest of this stuff. And it's this particular kind of furnace right here. It's a soul forge. So let me look up how to make that since I can't quite remember. So you will afford E. I think you need one more corrupted essence to make it. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five obsidian. Three stone and another corrupted essence in the center. So you're going to need nine if you hadn't made one of these furnaces yet. And uh, then you're going to just need to stick your diamond in the top, your corrupted essence is in the bottom, and then you're going to wait like 11 minutes <laughs> for it to cook, the diamond, which takes forever. And then you're going to end up with uh, some blank soul shards. Here's a couple I got right here. And you take those, and uh, let's just say I got one of these here. And then you go out and kill something. Uh, the next thing you kill, while you have this thing in your hot bar, that's what the soul shard becomes. So I got cows all over the place. Except these are all from a spawner. So you can get cows, you can get uh, almost any mob. I don't think squid works, but most mobs work. I have not checked nor tried to see if a uh, iron golem works. I don't think it does. And uh, a wither won't work either. But almost everything else works as a uh, 
possible thing that you can make a uh, spawner into. So these cows might be legit. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, let me just kill a cow. Yep, cow. Cow spawner, uh, soul shard. So this is not even one tier. You have to have at least tier one, which takes 64 kills of whatever you got. So uh, this would take forever to kill enough cows. And especially since I've got a bunch of cows here that are already from a spawner, those don't count, apparently. So i got this creeper shard right here. It's a tier two, and there's 165 creepers on it, so I've been busy. Except I use the sword of the Zephyr with Soul Stealer 3, which means every time I kill a uh, enemy with a soul shard in my hotbar of that particular type, I get four counted towards it instead of just one, which is pretty nice. Also, the sword of the Zephyr, which I found in a dungeon somewhere. Uh, actually, I found two of them in dungeons. Um, and I found all the books for it too. Uh, it's very nice. It's got a special ability that uh, if there's more than one enemy nearby when you swipe it, like when you smack an enemy with it, it'll hurt several at once. So in here, I've got actually two spawners if you look back in there. One of them is a uh, regular you know, vanilla spawner of skeleton sorts, and the other one is the um, a skeleton one I made with the soul shards and uh, let's just uh, the way you make those particular things are uh, just with uh, eight pieces of iron bars and a uh, crafting grid you know just a do yeah a donut shape pretty much and then you stick in your uh, soul shard just right click on it and uh, it'll turn into a, one of those uh, spawners. Now the level 5 is especially awesome because you can turn it off and on with a redstone signal, but none of the other ones will. Also, the level 5 can spawn stuff in broad daylight, and even if... Uh, you can also do it in other dimensions, like if... Um, for instance, if your ghasts <laughs> don't belong in the overworld, uh, you can spawn ghasts from one if uh, it's level 5 or even an enderman as well. It's probably the better use. And they spawn incredibly quickly, especially this one since I got, you know, regular spawner and a uh, other spawner here. So uh, these guys are just piling up over here and this is a really crappy, inefficient, quick, uh, you know, grinder I made for them because I was using the regular spawner to grind enough to get the uh, level 5 spawner, which takes 1,024 uh, kills of regular uh, skeletons. And uh, also I wanted a bunch of bones and arrows, which is quite nice. So, here I got the Sword of the Zephyr. One swipe and they're all dead. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> it's so nice. So, I'm going to drop off my junk. And uh, this is how I've been getting bones and arrows. I got a bunch of arrows. Also occasionally a gold pair of legs. <laughs> So this is quite nice to have. Uh, so I have not got any other spawner set up except the cow spawner, and I just got this particular soul shard for the uh, um, for the creepers that I haven't put up in a spawner yet. Now you can also move the spawners, and I'll show you how to do that. It's quite simple. You just break them, put them elsewhere, and uh, let's try it with a cow spawner here. So here's a move move spawner. <laughs> just break it. And uh, it'll drop the cow shard and the uh, soul cage here. Uh, so soul cage was simple. Let me just show you real, real quick, even though I explained it. Uh, here's some iron. Um, here's crafting grid. Need some uh, iron bars. I'll go ahead and make up one or two of these anyway. So it's just, you know, this simple recipe here. And it'll give you soul cage. And uh, so here is said cow spawner. Um, soul cage. And there's the cow. And I right click, supposedly. Oh, this is the uh, tier one. I need that. Uh, that's the tier zero. You have to have at least tier one. So this is the one I had in there. You right click on it, and you have a spinning cow. <laughs> that poor cow must be dizzy as hell. <laughs> poor thing. So uh, that's that with all that mess. Uh, other things I've been messing with is the bees, of course. And that's related to the trees a little bit. So mm -hmm. over here, how I got this tree uh, mess set up is uh, very similar to how I had it on the last map. Just your apiary here, uh, iron and gate up top. And anytime your bee is missing or your queen is missing, it'll pull everything out of here. 
It'll go out the side. This is a sandstone pipe. This is stone. Down here I got a... Uh, this is just a, um, a, a, a diamond pipe. Now, uh, it's better to have an apiary pipe, but I didn't have any at the time, and I started this a long time ago. And I found out the diamond pipe works just fine as long as you know exactly what's going to be produced by your bees, and you have one to uh, tell it what to do. Now, there you have oily comb, eh? Well, what's that? I got an oily queen, oily drones. Uh, so, what's up with that, eh? I got a whole bunch of oily comb. What? the heck is going on with all this extra stuff? Well, I've been breeding the hell out of these mofos. And not here, actually. Like, uh, right here, this is just my whole setup for uh, doing my trees. I got another bee set way over there. And I'm going to turn it to day before I go and uh, show you that mess so we can actually see them in action. And come on, yep. There we go. So, uh, there's the bed. And come on, daytime. You can do it. Thank you very much. And let me just run over there. Way over there. I actually had a second uh, spot I was breeding trees as well, just to get K-Pock and some other mess. Just so I can get some good trees. Uh, I, I don't have them all done, but I had all of them I really wanted to get done right away. So there's a cactus in there. That's because one of the bees randomly got a hold of some... Uh, of the wrong particular trait and wanted cactus instead of flowers. So there's distilled and that's the next tier up. That's the top tier uh, that I'm probably going to do right away. There's primevals. Yeah, this one's wanting cactus. Freaking accidentally turned into a modest. So I got to move this over so I can please this evil freaking queen has and ridiculous demands wanting cactus instead of flowers. What the heck? Alright. You happy now? Yeah, better be. Hostile environment. Ah, oh, great. I have to put that one in my uh, my other uh, hive in the desert. So anyway, uh, all right, up here I've got a book. Now this book I looked up uh, all the stuff for on a website. You can look just Google how to be uh, breed bees, and uh, you can look up exactly how to do everything. So this is bees, meadows to oil. You take a forest and a meadows bee and breed them together and you can get a common. Uh, you take a common queen or princess actually and uh, breed that with a forest and you, or a meadows and you'll get a cultivated. Breed your cultivated with a common and you can get a diligent or a noble. It'll split off right there. Uh, what you want for the oil bee is the noble. You use the noble plus the diligent and you get an ancient. Next page. Ancient uh, B plus a noble will give you a primeval, and a primeval plus a, mo a modest, which is a desert bee, will give you an oil bee. And that's how I got my oil bees. Now, uh, if you want the refined, uh, distilled, actually. Why do I have distilled? I thought I was after refined. Maybe that's the right thing. I can't remember. Uh, if you want the distilled princesses or the distilled bees, you got to go that other path. For instance, back here you had diligent or noble, and you didn't want the diligent. Well, if you actually do get diligence, you can breed those up into industrious, and I just kind of randomly did. It just sort of happened when I wasn't quite trying for it. Like, I was sort of trying for it. And it just skipped a step and gave me freaking industrious. I was like, what? What's going on here? But, uh... You know, it, you can just breathe those around and randomly get stuff. So these distilled bees are pretty nice. Uh, let me just show you those. Uh, let me get my bealizer. Oh, I already got my bealizer. <laughs> All right, so here's my bealizer, uh, and it's completely out of stuff. God damn it! <laughs> so <laughs> you're gonna need to ha have some um, some honey or honey drops or honey dew to uh, actually look at any of this stuff. You also need that for your trees, too, to uh, check out what your trees will do. So way over here, and my centrifuge. Actually, I got a bunch over here, too. Uh, I got, let's see, let's take some honeydew here. And put that in the top. Here's my distilled. Uh, it's still part industrious, but if you look down on this page, uh, if it's not industrious, it'll just have the oil comb, which is right there. This part here is from the industrious. So if I ever get this thing to have a pure strain, it'll only produce the oil comb. And the oil comb you stick inside of centrifuge, and it'll give you, like, oil drops. And you can turn that probably with a squeezer or something. I don't know. Uh, 
into pretty much buckets of oil and that way you can have a renewable source of oil and fuel and stuff like uh, I think there might even be a bee that will just make straight refined fuel but I'm not 100% sure um, I'll get there eventually one of these days but I'm probably going to start up with the, uh, the, re the distilled uh, bees I believe it is I got and uh, like over here I got some well no I don't have I just barely, just recently got a hold of the distilled uh, strain of bees, and I haven't got very many of them yet, nor do I have a stable strain, so I'm still trying to breed that into a pure strain, and uh, right here's my little desert hive, and this guy just wants, uh, what do you want anyway, freaking queen? Still wants flowers, even though you want to be in the desert. <laughs> Demanding. Well, fortunately, I got that set up right here. So uh, this one's good to go, and this one's got elongated life for whatever reason. That one's probably about to become a um, distilled or something. Never know what that thing's gonna pop out to be. So even though I got a bunch of oil in that desert and stuff, I'd still like to have a renewable source. But uh, this particular place just took forever to dig out the bottom. That's mostly why I did it off camera. Like me and CCR and uh, Rob just worked on it for a day to dig it all out, and still didn't get it all dig out and dug out by the end of it. And I ended up finishing it off in my own time. So uh, that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope you're generally well caught up now. <laughs> and uh, next episode, I'm probably gonna be keep keep working on that pyramid, I suppose. Well, catch you later.